go in first segment in three, two. Welcome, you're listening to the best of investing on Fox News Radio 9, 10 a.m. This is the show where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. Make sure you keep a pen and paper handy. We have a new phone number and we have some we have an excellent guest today, uh, and you're going to want to take some notes. And of course, I am uh, honored to have as my co-host Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money. He is the guru when it comes to investing in deeds of trust. How are you doing? Okay. Now, uh, when I was thinking about this, that for those who are new to our show, uh, here's our format. Imagine a few guys sitting around a bar having drinks, without the drinks, unfortunately, Darn. talking about <laughs> talking about next time, Mark, bring the drinks. Uh, talking about various business topics. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm honored to have... Oh, I already went into that. Okay. Oh, you can say it again. I can say it again? Okay. Mark Hoff of Pacific Private Money. Now, uh, Ken Wines couldn't be with us today. He is another co-host we have, and he's a featured Forbes columnist and sought-out speaker. Uh, okay, now get your paper and pencil handy because we have a new phone number. Our new phone number is 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190. 1190. All right. Use that phone number to answer the trivia questions for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right. We're still giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are sponsored by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located one hour northeast of San Francisco. Close enough for a nice vacation. The vacations are free. Their only request is a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Their website is lighthouse, the number four, fun.com. You can also reach them at 916-777-5511. They also have the best Mexican restaurant. Uh, mention my name, you get a free appetizer with the entree. Uh, our website is bestofinvesting.com. Leave us an email, and you can friend us on Facebook. You can also uh, email, well, the email would be edward at bestofinvesting.com. Uh, one more quick announcement, don't forget, World Wraps and Corner Madera in Santa Clara is still giving our listeners a free smoothie with purchase of a wrapper bowl. Mention the Best of Investing, go there for lunch today. Now, our special guest today is Phil Diamond, who is an expert in mediation. Let me read a little bio here. He is an attorney and a mediator who's practiced a wide range of civil litigation for over 35 years. His practice includes all areas of civil litigation, including real estate, construction, investor, and business disputes. Uh, he's also a settlement judge pro term, pro tem, there we go, and uh, he served for 15 years as an arbitrator for the San Francisco County Superior Court Judicial Arbitration Panel. Uh, again, guess, get, or excuse me, guess, listeners, get your pencil and paper handy because you're going to want to take great notes. He's going to teach us all about mediation. Phil Diamond, it is an honor to have you on as our guest. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome to the Best Investing. All right, Mark, take it away. Oh, hey, so uh, Phil... What is mediation? Well, that's a, a great question. And one of the things that uh, I don't know that you mentioned or not, Edward, in addition to being a lawyer, I am also a mediator, and that really is the focus of my practice. Uh, people often ask what mediation is, and uh, an easy way to think of it is uh, as a structured n negotiation. Uh, it's a form of uh, uh, alternative dispute resolution, which we call ADR, which is basically uh, ways of resolving disputes other than through formal litigation in a court or through arbitration. And we'll talk about arbitration in a few minutes uh, also. So if you think of this structured negotiation with the parties reaching their own agreement for resolution with the help of a neutral facilitator known as a mediator. Uh, the mediator is usually selected by uh, both of the parties by agreement and typically retained and paid for by both of the parties uh, and a successful mediation results in a binding agreement, a settlement agreement, which is then enforceable if necessary in court. So, so do you, is mediation a result of a lawsuit, or is it something that you get into before a lawsuit? That's a great question. Yeah, it's a great question. It could be uh, either of the, of the above. Uh, you do not have to be involved in a lawsuit in order to mediate a dispute. Many of the disputes that I see are pre-litigation. Many of them... Uh, or after litigation has happened, but disputes can be mediated at any time. So I guess you could have a dispute with someone and say, look, let's mediate this now before we get into a big lawsuit. Absolutely. I guess really inexpensive. And isn't it true that when you do file a lawsuit nowadays that in many cases the judges are now requiring mediation? Well, it, that's a great question. They, they strongly encourage mediation. Uh, they, they cannot force parties to... Uh, pay for a private mediation. That's really beyond the judicial power, but uh, they do uh, 
encourage the parties strongly to get involved in mediation because that settles cases and it takes the cases away from the yeah. overburden court system. And, and now this is kind of a behind the scenes question, but if you're the potential judge, if you know the potential judge who is uh, going to try this case and he suggests mediation, do you feel kind of obligated to do it because if you say no and the other party says yes and it goes to trial, is that judge going to remember that you said no? Yeah, that's uh, that, that could happen. And I think parties uh, take the, the judge's uh, suggestions to heart. And typically, if a judge does recommend it, the parties do do it. And it's a little frustrating, though, because in many cases, it's not binding. I mean, you can get into mediation, and if you don't agree on anything, all you did was just spend a bunch of money and you still have to go to court. Well, yeah. I, I can think of a bunch of situations where mediation would, would, would be you know, a very interesting tool. I mean, people get into partnerships all the time. I mean, I've been in real estate for 30 years and, and I've come across a number of real estate partnerships. In fact, I've been involved in real estate partnerships and partners, partnerships almost you know, by their nature end up failing it's, ultimately. Well, it's more and, of a marriage than a marriage. Well, it, exactly. And so oftentimes, you know, the, as you're trying to you know, dissolve a partnership or you have a disagreement that you're trying to resolve, oftentimes there's, there's a real benefit to having a third party you know, who has particular experience in, in handling that uh, come in and play. I, mean, I, I would think that that could save the parties an awful lot of money because let's face it, once you, once you, you know, attorney up and lawyer up and start talking lawsuit, I mean, you're, you're committing to, I mean, nobody ever really wins in that situation. Yeah, in fact, I've, I, I, not, not, not to steal your thunder on this, but tell me if you agree with this. Sure. I think one of the big advantages to mediation is, you know, when you are in camp and, and, you, and you've got your idea of mm -hmm. how you think you, you are in the right, and the other party obviously thinks that party's in the right, an um, um, outside mediator is on an even lay, playing field mm -hmm. and can basically give the advice as to, look, this is probably what's going to end up happening if you go to trial. And, and so a lot of times that's a big wake-up call for the people who are in mediation to realize how expensive it's going to be and how a mediator might choose. And, and, and absolutely, Edward. And actually both of you have raised two out great points that uh, we should be talking about. Uh, I mean, hey, we qualify for mediators. <laughs> I like that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and I'm sure there will be other great points uh, raised as, as we go through this. Number one, um, one of the primary functions of a mediator is indeed to do what you just talked about, which is to bring a neutral, unbiased, objective uh, set of eyes, if you will, uh, to a dispute and to help each side understand that there may be two sides to every issue that needs to be, uh, to be looked at. The other issue that, that you raised a moment ago is, um, has to do with the fact that mediation is voluntary, and that distinguishes it from arbitration, yeah. which, which leads to um, the next issue I know that we wanted to talk about, which is what is the difference between mediation and arbitration? Go ahead. Uh, an arbitrator has many of the same powers as uh, has a judge uh, in the sense that an arbitrator can issue and does issue what's called an award, which is, for all intents and purposes, the same thing as an order or a judgment that's entered by a judge uh, at the end of a case. Uh, an arbitrator uh, receives evidence, uh, either through documents uh, or through live testimony, and sometimes both, and at the end of that hearing, which is essentially a mini-trial before the arbitrator, uh, the arbitrator then um, decides what the outcome is going to be uh, for that dispute. The, contrast that with a mediator who does not have that same power. He's not given that power by the parties uh, or by the court. Um, rather, the arbitrator makes the outcome of the dispute for the parties, whereas the mediator assists the parties in crafting their own outcome. Okay. And one of the major differences is that uh, in mediation, the parties themselves decide how is this dispute going to be resolved, not entrusting that to somebody else, be it a judge, jury, almost or a, almost a kumbaya. Uh, so in most, most contracts these days that I've seen in real estate, they, they have these arbitration clauses uh, that basically say if there's a dispute, you agree to arbitrate as opposed to you know civilly litigate. And, yes. and I find that pretty interesting. And it's, it's also interesting that there are people that don't like arbitration. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that uh, after we come back from yeah. break. All right. We have to go to our first commercial break. So here is the first trivia question. And uh, I think I forgot to say that uh, today's going to be uh, music, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. This is, uh, I've got music. 
uh, sports and uh, movies. We're mixing right. it up. Mix it up a little bit. Okay. The music group Starship used to be Jefferson Starship, but what was their name before Jefferson Starship? You got to be from the 70s to know this one. The uh, first three callers with the correct answer win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. And again, our, our new phone number, write this down, people 888 912 1190. That's 888-912-1190 to answer this question. The music group Starship used to be Jefferson Starship, but what was their name before Jefferson Starship? 888-912-1190. Make sure to include your name, address, and phone number, and we will be right back. 